Hi guys, welcome to the only elevators tutorial part 7 and uh, in part 6 we have uh, created our first uh, actor blueprint for our BP uh, for our elevator and it is called as uh, BP elevator and you can uh, if you can remember we have looked at uh, how uh, trigger boxes are different from uh, box collisions inside this uh, class blueprints and uh, I have added a box collision and we got our trigger uh, overlap events and we have tested it out. So that was the summary of previous video and we looked at how how to pick a parent class and uh, how different blueprint classes uh, can be changed and uh, likewise, right? So let's get started with the um, tutorial and um, yeah, first things first. So I'm going to show you one other thing and uh, one other thing that you should uh, know so if you can remember uh, I showed you that uh, when we are creating a blueprint class there are these different uh, templates and uh, I told you that uh, object is the uh, basic one and actor is derived from an object and object only has data and when object is turned into an actor it has this transform data and pawn is the one who is having this uh, position and uh, feature of receiving input from a controller that means i have highlighted that actor is not having uh, actor is actor has no uh, power of receiving any input from a controller so let's see about that right so if we check that um if we go to the bp elevator so i'm going to close this level blueprint and uh, if i go to our class blueprint and uh, if i search uh, e key and you can see yep this is the key event if you can remember uh, we have used them in uh, level blueprint and if you just check those uh, now if i press e this should print but you will see that uh, it's not printing if i pressed e that is because the reason of actors are not having uh, this feature of in uh, receiving inputs from a controller so to do that we have to ask permission uh, from player controller right so if you know about the game mode and uh, if you know about the game mode and the game framework so that's a, a little bit of a uh, little bit large topic to talk about so I'm not going to talk about uh it uh, in this tutorial but if i show you so, so the whole uh if you go to the project settings go to the project settings and you can see uh, you can find this maps and modes in here and if you can see there is this uh, default modes section and there is this default game mode and the current game mode is third person game mode and if we expand the selected game mode section you can see uh, within this game mode within this BP third person game mode uh, there are specific classes to run the game uh, first one is pawn class so pawn class is the character that we are controlling as our player and there's this hard class and there's this player controller class basically what player controller does is player controller gets input right so 
I mentioned that uh, I mentioned in the last video that um, that control is uh, is any device that can uh, get input to our computer or our game engine. So it will be a keep uh, keyboard, mouse, gamepad, joystick, anything, right? And we have this blueprint class called player controller class, and uh, this player controller class is the one who is getting these controls to our game. When our game runs, player controller class is the one who is getting inputs. And we have this pawn class. So you know that uh, if we, if, uh, if you know that uh, you have seen that uh, in when we are picking up a parent, there's this pawn uh, category and uh, what pawn means uh, it's a possible it's a possible uh, it's a possible actor right it can it can be controlled as a player so that is why this third person character uh, is the current pawn class and you know that if we if you are using keyboard inputs like WSD, your player goes around, right? And player controller gets these inputs and it transfers to the pawn class, right? That is how this works. In game mode, they define the pawn class and the player controller class, and then player controller gets the inputs and player controller reroutes these inputs into our pawn class and the pawn class gets this information and it receives inputs from this control through player controller class and it just works but in our case as i said this is not working because level blue uh, in level blueprint it it works uh, it works it really works so it is built as that so level blueprint is kind of attached to the level so it it should be uh, it should have this uh, controllability over the level uh, with key bindings that is why level blueprint uh, in level blueprint it works automatically but in but we are in uh, but now we are using an actor class and for actors this store is different and uh, we need to we need to ask from player controller to get us this control, right? So that is the thing we have to do. So to do uh, to work this, I just have to uh, get the event begin play, and uh, there is this node called enable input, right? You can see that uh, there is this section called input, and uh, we can find this enable input node. And you can see that the target is an actor, right? So this enables the input of an actor, and it asks uh, it asks for player control. Now, if we need to get permission from player control to enable the input, we have a way of getting that. It's a default node. You just have to find this node called get player control it basically gives us the uh, gives us the gives us a reference of the player controller that is being uh, currently used in the game mode so it basically plugs it in here and now our actor has control over key bindings right now if you play you can see that now hello word is printing uh, when i press e right so um, that is how it works and uh, yeah now the thing is i don't want this e and uh, q right e and q Let's change this to Q, right? 
now we have this um, Q and E and let's put uh, the label as ascent and descent so we don't need these two keys to work every time we just need to work we just need to work these key bindings only when our player is inside this elevator right that is the thing we don't need to do that every time therefore we need we don't need to do this in here but we did it in uh, we did uh, this one uh, a little bit different in our level blueprint if you can remember uh, if you can remember there's this q and e and uh, if i go inside this you can see that uh, once i click uh, we just disables the input and also when we uh, overlap with the trigger box you can see that uh, we have this uh, easing elevator uh, condition that we have stored in a boolean variable and then we call that before when we execute the uh, execute the node for the keys right so we basically restricted EO, uh, EOQ key being worked or being executed by this condition but uh, since we have this uh, way of enabling input and uh, disabling input for a actor we can just use it there so i'm just going to uh, disconnect uh, disconnect this enable need for uh, input node from begin uh, even begin play i'm just going to set it in here enable input when our character uh, steps into the trigger box and there's this node called disable input similarly and uh, i just copy and paste this player controller and just connect it in here now when our character is in the trigger box or the elevator it enables inputs and once we uh, go outside the elevator it basically disables input so now q and e works only when we are inside this elevator right it's that simple so if you try it q and e nothing works but if you go inside q e it works cool that's the thing uh, that we want to uh, happen and uh, first step is done now what can we do right if you can remember uh, there's this uh, move elevator thing and it basically does this uh, timeline thing and uh, yeah its name has changed let's change it as elevator timeline cool and um, I can basically create this timeline and uh, change our elevation let's test that let's create a timeline and uh, in here let's use a custom event custom event uh, move elevator elevator right and then uh, we need this timeline and let's rename it as elevator el sorry elevator uh, tl for timeline and uh, we should play from start 
double click the time will be one second so this can be changed by you and add a flow track rename it as alpha so i'm not going to uh, time i'm not going to take time to explain this because i have explained uh, these uh, in previous tutorials when we are doing with level blueprints and just select both of those keys use user right now our timeline is there and we just use lerp node which is uh, which is called as linear interpolation and we just need alpha right and then we have to get set at location node and make sure that your elevator mesh is movable right if you can remember if this is static it's not going to work therefore we should uh, set this mobility to movable and then we have this actor and uh, for this actor we have to set a new uh, location let's see uh, let's say this is 500 and uh, let's get a reference to self i'm i'm really sorry uh, right click search self and you can get a reference to self self means this actor uh, get get this actor's location get location get actor location right and uh, basically split it give split here x y x y value should be same as the current one and uh, the annual location should be 500 sorry uh, we just have to connect this in here and uh, current location will be 0 0.065 now I'm, I'm just going to test but you know the uh, you know how this code will work at the end uh, we will go back you, we will go there right okay now we just have to connect move elevator function or the custom node that we have created here now when you press E, uh, this works. That means timeline works. Play from start, and the value uh, of alpha goes uh, from zero to one in a time span of one second. But it is mapped to map from zero to five hundred, so it uh, changes this value from zero to five hundred in one seconds of time span. And let's just test if this is working. Good, it's really working and uh, perfectly fine. And you can see that uh, we don't have any more control of the elevator. Right now, if you can remember, what we need is uh, we need this flows variable to store our actors uh, flow actors to get the elevation of each different flows and there should be two different integer variables to define the next flow and the current flow and i'm just going to create this variable flows and search for actor object reference and array 
and uh, let's just put instance editable here all right and then i'm going to create a new variable next flow and uh, it should be the index right and uh, i can just put it as next flow index yeah it makes sense right and uh, just duplicate it and uh, rename it as current flow index right now we just have to get the current one and we have to get the next one and we have to get this flow uh, array and we need to find this get a copy node and uh, we need current flow index here and also we need a duplicated one but the next flow index is connected and uh, get this get act uh, location and we just have to split it get the z value right and uh, the current one should be here right and just duplicate this z value to here right so this should work and uh, yeah this should work here and the thing we have to do is um, we just have to if you remember or uh, if you go to our level blueprint code um, can see that uh, yeah in the event graph when you are uh, pressing Q and E this is the move elevator function that is this part from our uh, new code and if you go inside this you just don't need to put this because we have done this uh, by putting enable input and disable input here so we don't need this variable instead of we just need this right if you remember what we need to do is um, if you press q if you press q we just have to get our flows and get the length and just subtract one because we need to check what is the maximum index of the flow and then we have to compare it with the current flow and if this is equal if this is equal it just don't work we should tell that there are no more flows right right but if it's not the uh, if it's not the case we can just move elevator but before that uh, what we need to do is if you can remember we just have to uh, disable our input and we just have to add one to next flow right we just have to disable input here so that player can't uh, spam or player can't reuse this uh, q key until the animation is finished uh, going upward 
and then uh, get the next flow index and just add one okay i am going a little bit of fast because this should be familiarized by now you can go here and also after finished you just have to enable input and also we just have to set the current flow index is now equal to the next one right now we have created that we don't need this uh, ascent and descent prints right now for the descent one we just have to look if the current flow number is equal to the zero if this is zero we just can't go further right uh, just copy and paste simple and it should disable and instead of plus plus i should use minus minus increment not uh, increment int and yeah it basically now should work right so that is the same logic that we have used and now you can see that uh, it is uh, it's just uh, the previous logic that we can use and there are few differences between level uh, level blueprint and class blueprint not much but let's see now you can't rescue any okay you go you have to go to inside ah, okay one thing we have not defined our flows right if you go to our blueprint and if you select your bp elevator now you can see this flows variable because i selected this flows variable and said this instance editable right because this is an instance every asset that we have put into our world is an instead of, uh, is an instance of its original one right it's basically a copy so instead of uh, saying it a copy we say it's an instance right well uh, there is this uh, difference between instance and a copy as well but for now let's uh, for now let's say that uh, this is copy so instance editable means every instance for every instance this flow value can be changed for every instance this value can be changed that is why uh, we have put a check on here and now you can see that we have this uh, exposed variable now you can basically go for five indexes and you can uh, use this pick actor from scene and just use this flow g right now you can see that it stores in here right pick the flow one all right really easy flow two and flow three and flow four now we have our all flows defined so the code can work and uh, yeah yep 
and if i take another elevator another instance or another copy you can see that uh, the flows variable is not working we can define a uh, variated one right we can def we can define a uh, another array element for this for for this elevator right so you can uh, you can have more, as much as possible elevators in your game and these different elevators can have different actors or elevator or elevations uh, defined so those will work accordingly right so that's the beauty of this uh, blueprint class uh, instead of creating it on um, level blueprint because in level blueprint you should uh, it's just uh, you should uh, manually code when this uh, these actors change right so that is the thing uh, we have to figure it out when uh, we are working with the level blueprint but now this seems really great and if i play all right q and e is not working uh, outside the elevator now if i play uh, if i press uh, q it goes to the first goes to the second goes to the third and if i press e it goes below again upward now there are no more flows works fine now i can just go down cool now uh, this just works really well and what we have to do now is just clean it up and organize and if you can remember um, how we do it and I'm, I'm not going to talk about that but yeah I'm just going to uh, keep these keep this uh, begin overlap and end overlap in here so this is just basic stuff so I don't need to um, uh, clean it up in here and um, I just can use a commit here begin overlap events let's say uh, trigger box overlap overlap events now that uh, makes sense and just give our comment color that we have saved it's really easy and then uh, we have this q and e now yeah i don't think uh, we have to do something here okay yeah we can do uh, what we can do is um, yeah yeah what we can do is uh, just go uh, just uh, let's go to the below and uh, let's mm, 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 mm. right let's just uh right click um collapse to a function and let's rename it as get current flow elevation right and I just don't need this uh, execution lines therefore I'm going to select it and call it PO and go inside that and uh, this should be the elevation and uh, yeah 
this looks fine all right so now it current flow elevation is here right click function collapse to function and uh, get next flow elevation now this is also a PO1 go inside rename this as elevation or oh, we can just uh, put it as return value that is uh, that's I think that's good because in in the function topic we say that uh, okay we are getting the flow elevation now elevation is the return value so it makes sense right and um, the thing can get this alpha value here and um, okay can't remember what is Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Data data location. Okay, we just got it in here. Ah, yeah, we have created one uh, function to this, but yeah, that's perfectly fine. I can uh, create two functions as well, so it's not a problem because. Uh, we just don't have to go for uh, go for more depth in organizing and uh, cleaning up because this blueprint only consists uh, is it only contains the logic related to our elevator system. Therefore, we just need we just don't need to uh, go uh, this kind of depth that we have done in uh, level blueprint but yeah now we have these two and also yeah we can also give this uh, private as the access because we don't need to give this value to outside therefore we set it as private and it doesn't matter really so it's just uh, it's just a thing that we can do not a must and uh, yeah we can uh, collapse this into a function so we can collapse to function and say that uh, set um, post states um, set let's say set animation post states so it will set uh, states after the animation so you can give a suitable name as you like as you please and uh, get that location now that's really okay to be here yeah we can keep it like here. Uh, we just don't need to collapse it into a node stuff and stuff. So it's really fine. I can give a comment. All right. Um, move elevator. In time or 
animate elevation right animate elevation so that would be cool and uh, let's just view these comments now we should be ascent key event and we should be descent key event and I can keep those two uh, here and then now uh, yeah now we have organized and uh, as I said uh, I didn't go uh, far as this is only this work only for the elevator and I don't need to set up set categories but if the logic gets logic and uh, yeah if this uh, blueprint gets more complicated we can uh, consider uh, categorizing variables and stuff but yeah for now this is okay and uh, in the part 8 let's see how to uh, how to embed a ui right so let's let's show a ui in in next tutorial uh, when we go inside we uh, let's show our let's show uh, q and e keys and uh, instructions to our player that they can uh, ascend or descend uh, their elevator using key and e so that will be shown in the hut and uh, that will be hidden after our character um, comes outside the elevator and it shows back when uh, when our character goes inside so that is the basic uh, ui thing we are going to implement for this elevator system and also um, we are going to uh, in also yeah maybe not next part but after that part we will look uh, for a finalized 3d model and let's uh, go to sketchfab and find some 3d models uh, uh, for uh, elevators and we will find different kind of elevators and then let's uh, take a look how we can uh, make multiple types of elevators visually and uh, functionally uh, as well so yeah we can go further and uh, there are a lot of possibilities uh, even for elevator mechanic and uh, we will as i said before uh, we can also use uh, line traces for interaction instead of collision boxes so Let's see, let's say if, we, if you have a first person game, now uh, you just have to click on, uh, click or interact with these uh, elevator buttons to go upside and down and uh, you just have to uh, select a floor to go. So yeah, now uh, that kind of, that kind of uh, things can be done. So we will take a look how we can done uh those things as well and yeah there are many possibilities uh, let's take a look and that's all for this tutorial and uh, let's wrap it up and uh, yeah bye guys thank you okay